Greetings, friends. Welcome to CTUCC Conference Cast for February 6th, 2015, the regular podcast of the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you may be on life's journey at this very moment, you are welcome here. We offer a program note today. For the next two weeks, we'll be presenting a simplified video edition of Conference Cast in order to give me time to work on a project that we're hoping will really invigorate some of our communications ministries here. We'll have more about that when it's done. Thanks for your patience. We begin this week's Conference Cast with this meditation from Karen Zeal, Minister of Faith Formation and Leadership. In the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah, the prophet launches into a hymn praising the transcendent power of God. God does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. A cultural conversation is emerging on honing our strengths and the power of vulnerability. Sociologist, researcher, and author Brene Brown suggests that to strengthen oneself for the living of these days and to derive meaning from them, we must be genuinely vulnerable. We must comprehend the potential our own vulnerability has to transform our living. The concept seems a paradox, yet in dialogue with her research and her own story, she suggests that those who live the most deeply meaningful and wholehearted lives are somehow poised to do this. She exhorts us to summon the necessary strength to be vulnerable and to lean into what our lives and authentic living require of us rather than follow our inclination for leaning away. What enables me to do so? How do I summon the courage to lean into those moments when life demands the courage of my convictions? How do I overcome my natural inclination to avoid stress and conflict? How does God empower us? When has God bolstered me in a time of challenge or in a moment of weakness? In this portion of Isaiah's prophetic writing, often referred to as the Book of Consolation, I am reminded that I've faced into what has challenged me most readily when I rely on God's presence. I've often relied on the nurturing, supportive relationships I have with others to get me through I know this as one aspect of emerging interdependence in relationship. What enables us to lean into those moments? Perhaps, as Brown suggests, it is willing vulnerability. Was Moses leaning into his vulnerability when he approached the burning bush? Was Ruth leaning into her vulnerability when she chose to follow Naomi into a place not her own, into relationship with an unfamiliar community? Was Jesus leaning into his vulnerability when he preached first in his own faith community? Did the first disciples lean into their vulnerability when they engaged a new mission with little more than the clothes on their backs? I have always appreciated the strength of those who risk being vulnerable. I value strength that not only demonstrates courage and leans into a challenge, but which is also accompanied by humility, commitment, and compassion. Here is a prayer for this week. Creator, open me. Open me to your love and care Transform my vulnerability into meaning. Challenge me to live wholeheartedly with courage and compassion. 
Strengthen me to do your will. Creator, lift me on the wings of your love. Amen. In the news this week, sometimes we talk in worship during unison prayers or responsive readings mostly, and of course there's singing the hymns, but the church experience is primarily one of listening to someone else. Church leaders try several ways to engage members and friends in conversation beyond monologue. First Church of Christ Congregational UCC in East Haddam recently viewed the film The House I Live In and followed it with a lively discussion of how America has come to fill its prisons with nonviolent drug offenders. First Congregational Church UCC in Woodbury took a time-honored approach with a book study of Frank Schaeffer's Why I Am an Atheist Who Believes in God in January. At Church of the Redeemer in New Haven, they moved interaction into worship. Groups of 12 to 15 scattered around the church building for conversations about church vitality. They won past to the Rev. Dr. Rochelle Stackhouse's support when the plan led to sharing in communion. Before they went off to their conversations, Dr. Stackhouse blessed the elements, and those were then shared in the smaller settings to close and sanctify the discussion. Conference Minister the Reverend Kent Salati commented, This moment of experimentation was a holy time to conduct the work of the people. The Racial Justice Ministry of the Conference released a resource for those who would like to lead a discussion of the movie Selma this week. The discussion questions guide people in exploring what they feel, what they think, and what they will do. In addition to considering the events of 1965, participants will also examine parallels with more recent deaths of young African Americans. The examples of persons appearing in the film may inspire viewers to follow their own path in responding to racism. Last weekend, 14 young people and adult mentors gathered for the annual retreat of high schoolers who are thinking about working for God for a living. In a weekend dedicated to rekindling the flame, the group explored different spiritual practices for the strengthening and refreshment of the soul. They also celebrated their gifts with an impromptu talent show. Our congregations are raising up youth with compassionate hearts, said Debbie Kirk, Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministries for the conference. As the Connecticut Conference sets a focus on leadership development, we are intentional about nurturing the spirits of our amazing young people. We released a new Vantage Point video this week, the first of a series in which Conference Minister the Reverend Kent Salati talks with church leaders who are currently engaged in mutual interdependent ministries. This first installment features pastors from two pairs of churches giving the highlights of their work together. In upcoming episodes of Vantage Point, they'll discuss the joys and learnings of mutual ministry in greater detail. You'll find Vantage Point on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ctucc. And of course, you'll find it on our website, along with more on all these stories and the current headlines at ctucc.org slash news. There are still openings for the March 6th through 8th confirmation retreat at Silver Lake, so sign your group up while there's space for you. Get ready for summer with a workshop called Unpacking Vacation Bible School on February 7th in West Hartford. The Stepping Stones workshop, team building with youth groups and adults too, will be February 10th in Cheshire. With another Stepping Stones event on church asset mapping for faith formation on February 26th in Milford. The Stepping Stones workshop, Radical Hospitality with Youth, will be March 9th in South Glastonbury. And you can learn more about all the Stepping Stones workshops at ctucc.org slash steppingstones. Clergy and lay people have a unique opportunity to learn about the ethics of ministry and of church life with the UCC's General Counsel Don Clark, including a performance of Clergy Ethics the Musical the weekend of March 13th in South Glastonbury, Southington, and Middlefield. Young people have an opportunity to prepare to be a counselor in training at Silver Lake with a weekend conference March 13th through 15th. 
Registration is open for Super Saturday. This day of workshops features keynote speaker the Reverend Reuben Duran, who promotes new church development for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. This joint venture with the Massachusetts Conference will be held March 21st in Ludlow, Massachusetts. The Women's Yoga and Spirit Retreat is at Silver Lake March 27th through the 29th, as is the Maple Sugaring Weekend for junior high-aged youth. Registration is open for Stewardship in the Changing Church from Consumerism to Generosity, this year's Ecumenical Stewardship event, which runs April 17th and 18th in Boxborough, Massachusetts. And Silver Lake's Spring Action Weekend is May 1st through 3rd at our Outdoor Ministry Center in Sharon. To learn more about these events or to register, visit us at ctucc.org slash events. And make sure to check out silverlakect.org as well to take a look at the offerings for summer conferences. Registration is open and we're ready and waiting for you. Our Spirited Wednesday thought comes from the Reverend Jocelyn Gardner Spencer, pastor of the First Congregational Church ECC in Woodstock. She has been gazing with wonder at the images sent back to Earth from the Hubble Space Telescope. The God who made this glory, she says, also knit each person in their mother's womb. She writes, The God who can see the whole of space in a single glance also counts the hairs on your head. The God who composed the music of the spheres also knows your name. The breathtaking awe you feel when you look at the heavens, God feels that way when God looks at you. And that brings this conference cast to a close. Thanks to Karen Zeal for her reflection and to GarageBand for our music. Primary funding for Conference Cast comes from your congregation's gifts to our church's wider mission, Basic Support, changing lives through the United Church of Christ. This is Eric Anderson, the Associate Conference Minister for Proclamation, Identity, and Communication for the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ, praying that your days this week may be filled with the presence, the guidance, and the grace of God.